It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I say it's good to be in the house of the Lord because because the church is in your heart. And where we go is a worship building. So if you go there and you don't have the church in your heart, then you just go into a building. And the scripture says, we're two or more together, together, together in my name. I will be also there in the mix. I believe we got that covered tonight. <laughs> it is good to be around so many wonderful people. From the time me and my fiance walked in, you can feel the love. You can see the love of Jesus Christ. You can see people demonstrating the same thing I experienced over five years ago when brothers walked inside the institution knowing nothing about none of us, but they had one mission, and that was to serve God and sow the seeds of righteousness that the good Lord had given them. So it is my honor to stand here. I had planned to attend just to say thank you, but the good Lord seemed fit to open another door and to give me the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for everything that not only that I received, thank you on the behalf of every man incarcerated, wherever he may be. I just want to say thank you for that. <laughs> Kairos, man. <laughs> If I only had the time to tell you. It, it's amazing. It's amazing and I wasn't this guy when I first met these brothers. I was a guy who whatever went on in the compound, I knew about it. And it wasn't good. If anything was going on, it was ran by me. That wasn't good. And sometimes I was so ashamed because my father was a minister. So being raised one way and becoming incarcerated and begin to live another way, I was ashamed, I was discouraged, and I felt like I had no place. Even for the times that I wanted to get my life back on track, because people will tell you you will never amount to nothing. They will write you off and tell you you will never make it. And I was at the end of my rope, and some of my friends said, you know what? These guys from Kairos are coming in. And I was looking at it like, I went against everything that my father had raised me to believe. So like, man, just try it out, just try it out. So I went, and from the time I walked through the doors, just a perfect stranger, and they loved me, and they introduced themselves to me, and they wouldn't even let me get up to get myself my own drink, or wouldn't let me get up and fix my plate, and just the whole weekend, it was just like so amazing, like, I said, Lord, why can't I be faithful like this? Why is it that these brothers can be faithful and they can come in here and not look at us for who we are, what color we are, what we've done, but they're here with one mission and one purpose. So when I left that weekend, it was time for a reality check for me. And I refer to this so many times where, where Paul says, in Corinthians, he said, I planted and Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So, so many times I reflect back and my father planted, but the Kairos brothers watered, but God gave the increase. So as God began to change my direction 
in front of the same peers who feared me or respected me because I had clapped not at this institution, but any institution I stepped foot step my foot on. God began to change my direction right in front of them. And it started with a prayer circle. I knew how to pray. But God said, it's not for you, but it's to help men who want to pray to learn how to pray. So it started with that. And then as time go on, the good Lord began to call me into the ministry. And the regrets and the mistakes that I had made, it was, I was afraid. But these same brothers <laughs> went from a four-day weekend and come in once a month for a reunion. The good Lord seemed fit to give them a slot on Wednesdays to have Bible studies. So I began to reason and say, Lord, you calling me into the ministry. I don't even have nobody to sit under, nobody that I can learn from. I don't have anybody. But God began to shift the atmosphere. He began to allow me to spend time with these wonderful brothers. And we began to talk and get to know one another. And my faith began to grow. My strength began to grow. And God just, as I humbled myself and became obedient and I accepted my calling, God shifted the atmosphere once again to where he allowed me to be the first man while incarcerated to become licensed and ordained while in the institution. And, and that's just God. That's just, that's just God. You see, you look at me today and you may say, man, he seems to have it together. But I tell my church all the time that God is faithful, but Reverend Franklin is a mess. <laughs> and, and, and it's just best that they understand that God is the one who puts us somewhere you're not supposed to be. God is the one who puts the right people in your path. God is the one who opens doors no man can close. See, it, 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 it's only God. If it wasn't for God, I surely wouldn't be here. None of us would be here. You know, you brothers and sisters wouldn't do what you do if it wasn't for the love of Jesus Christ. So I am, I'm overwhelmed and there's, there's so many things that I could share with you, and I, and I welcome you. I, I want you, brothers and sisters, to know that hey, y'all stuck with me now, you know. So so y'all stuck with me. So if you see me, I want to know you. I want to know you. I like to at church. I like to greet every member Sunday morning. I like to talk to them and ask them how they're doing. And the same goes with you, brothers and sisters. I want to know your names. I want to know how you're doing. I want to know what's going on with you. Because as the body of Christ, if you don't spend time with one another, how can you know when something's going on with one another? And it, it's a strong number. But I encourage you, spend time with every brother and sister this weekend, because the more time you spend together, the more you learn about one another, the more you we're on the same journey. And you may have been through something that you can help somebody else out on. And don't be ashamed to be bold and be confident in what you believe when you know God has delivered you from something or seen you through something. But these brothers, I, I was incarcerated for 20 years. And so many people tell me that, man, I didn't believe that you would even be able to function in today's society. Man, I never thought you was going to make it out. And I remember that 
My father used to always tell me, no matter what you're going through, no matter where you're at, you always trust and believe in God. Amen. Don't you never allow nobody to take that away from you. So as I was doing things, I felt whatever I was big enough to do from time to time, the word of the Lord would always return to me. And the grace and the love of Jesus Christ never failed me. And I was released September the 19th of 2019. September the 13th, I'll be out two years. And I was getting ready to get out. Fear was beginning to kick in because I, I went to a house, I was going to a halfway house, and I was going somewhere I knew nobody. I remember one of the Cairo's brothers, it was on a Wednesday, he came to me, he said, can I talk to you for a second? He said, I'm supposed to tell you, don't worry about nothing. Everything that you need will be provided for you. I held on to that. I had nothing else to hold on to. <laughs> so I held on to that and I embraced that. And from the time I walked out until today, I have not been without anything that I need. I have been blessed over and over again. I have now made it back to my hometown in Elizabethtown. I have a full-time job at Matosa. I have my own pressure washing business. God has truly opened the door, and just because he could, he gave me a, a wonderful, beautiful fiance. And she supports the ministry. I am the associating pastor at the same church I grew up in that my father pastored. So to be able to come here today, I always tell people I get to. See, I get to preach the word of God. I don't got to, but I get to share the word of God. Because... When Jesus died on the cross for us, he could have said that was enough. But he continues to love us and pleads our case. That's why he's the mediator between us and God. And I still have this wonderful, awesome, amazing relationship with these Kairos brothers. And words, words can't say Words can't say if I had a thousand tongues, I couldn't tell you how much these brothers mean to me. These brothers here, they are amazing men. And often when I have the opportunity to meet their wives, I tell them thank you because they sacrificed and they shared their husband to come inside the institution. And that means so much to allow their husbands to come in and, and be gone and supporting the ministry and what they feel God has put on their heart to do. But these brothers of mine, they're amazing. They're amazing and they, they uplift me, they encourage me. And they hold me accountable. You know, accountability is so key. And I encourage all my brothers, if you see me doing anything that don't line up with my walk or the path God wants me on, man, tell me. Because I want to grow and continue to grow in my ministry. I want to grow and continue to grow in my walk. I want to be able to reach whether it be one person or 1,000 people, when God gives me the opportunity to share the word of God. So my brothers, they're, they're amazing. So brothers and sisters, I believe y'all great, but y'all got some work to do to catch up with these brothers. Because 
these brothers, these brothers are wonderful. And I'm just truly honored to be here. I'm truly honored to be here. And on the behalf of Eddieville, I just want to say for every man incarcerated, thank you for doing everything that you do. Thank you for the prayers. And I know they'd be mad if I don't mention the cookies. Man, <laughs> thank you for the cookies. Just thank you for everything that you do. And remember, everybody has a place. Everybody has a place when you're working for God. And I leave you with this. There was this, there was this lady, she would get up every morning and she would take a stick and she would put it over her shoulders. And she would put one water pot on the left and one on the right. And she would go to the well. But the water pot on the left, it wouldn't hold its water, it would leak out on the way back home. So she would go fill up the water pots and on the way back home, it would leak out every single morning. So the water pot was just broken and upset and said, I'm useless. Why do you even keep me around? And God spoke and said, that's why I put you over the grass. <laughs> so you can water the grass on the way back home. So God has a place, a plan, and a purpose for every man and woman in this room. The only way you're not reaching people if you're not speaking to people. God bless you, and I love you.